Hello and welcome to the Salt Collector channel where we collect salt, buckets of salt, from the tears of our enemies. Today I have a special one for you. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit of a, a new deck that I've made. I mentioned it briefly in, in my last match as Bolton. This time I've gone back to the drawing board a bit and figured out, okay, Bolton's not quite aggressive enough. So I can't out aggro the aggro decks. He's not quite defensive enough so I can't play like a, a controlly style deck and he's not mid rangey enough either so I needed to think of a way to to choose a direction um, and that is refusing to go sabers so what I've done is I've gone 100% aggro that is with the crown of dominion cash in type build and so far it's been working pretty pretty well um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I I've been, haven't played it against Lexi yet. I haven't played it against Azalea. So those two I want to try it at some point. Uh, but against all the other decks, I seem to be putting up a good fight. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of examples. Um, it's commentary over some games. Uh, but before that, I will talk about the deck a little bit. So obviously the Crown Dominion is the headpiece. Um, here is Royal. Uh, because we're working towards a big hand where we use via the vanguard sorry first we use um cash in to make our hand size five plus arsenal uh six six hand size we have a tunic counter floating um, via the vanguard and you can at this point you can be in the vanguard for three light cards two light cards whatever is in your hand to sort of best decide what, what that outcome is going to be and then you start attacking and what you should be attacking with is cards like Snatch. Snatch is now a 6 or 7 uh, a power card. Um, so Snatch Yellow also works. So you got uh, 6 Snatches and then 9 Bolt of Courages. Uh, the blue one doesn't really ever come into uh, uh, that much of assistance to you, but it's there just in case. Um, and then on top of that, your Bolt of Courages work well with courageous steel hands and, and um, uh, beacon of victories so that's the goal the goal is to set up this really big V the vanguard turn with cash in um, and just to hit with a lot of draw on hit effects I mean, line strike also works with the just draw card uh, because you, you're attacking with seven draw card um, which is pretty good pretty good and all the other attacks are zero cost. So you know what you're going to draw. You don't really need to rely on uh, resources too much. Um, the exception being Bolting Blade and Take Flight. Bolting Blade, if you've charged twice, which you should be doing anyways, charging twice, then this is going to be a zero cost uh, card. Take Flight uh, doesn't fit the mold. It's not good on a V the Vanguard turn, but it is good on any other turn when you're waiting for V the Vanguard especially for a Lumina Ascension turn uh, when you want to take flight, Lumina, Sword Sword and then you're only using one one soul to do that um, yeah I think that's, a, it's, that's pretty much what this deck aims to do you want to build up your soul a bit so you have two or three cards in your soul before you go off it's not necessary uh, I think two is the minimum uh, so yeah I should say that two is necessary uh, three plus is just nice to have uh, especially if you're if you're signing in uh, celestial cataclysm that requires three um, other inclusions in the deck which is not traditional for Bolton is art of war so this acts as an, a, another version of via the vanguard because it will draw you two and it will buff all your cards once. So you're not going to get the plus X from via the vanguard, two or three. You're going to get plus one, um, but that is, that's good enough uh, uh, in, in, in a lot of circumstances. And then, yeah, if you're, it's just, it's just another aggressive, aggressive hit out. Um, and then you have Lumen Ascension, which is just a good card off off of a uh, Take Flight or a Engulfing Light plus Courageous Steel Hand, Express Lightning plus Courageous Steel Hand, um, and this always threatens 
threatens eight plus two life gain, so it's a 10, 10 point swing, uh, which is nice. And then Spirit of Unia, I think that's how you pronounce it, is great when you get a V the Vanguard turn into a Lumina Ascension because it doesn't break the chain. Lumina, uh, v the Vanguard says, um, what does it say? It says, attacks you control on this combat chain gain plus one for each light card charge this way. So once you break the chain to play Lumina Ascension, you are effectively losing the bonus you would be getting for V the Vanguard. But by playing Lumin Ascension as an instant, um, that doesn't break the chain. So, yeah, bear that in mind. What I've done a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, which I think is important for you guys to learn from my mistakes, is I played V the Vanguard and then I played Lumin Ascension with Spirit of Rhenia thinking, yeah, this is amazing, whatever. And then I've wasted a resource point to brave forward bracers it's it's not a f it's not a total fail because the plus one i got from v the vanguard is lost when i get a plus one from brave Forge brave forge bracers but if the if it was a plus two then i would have lost a, a point of damage there so bear that in mind when you when you hit with the first uh, lumina don't activate your bracers while the v bonus is there in the sideboard, we got a bit of a defensive package. It's a little bit weird, I know, because it dilutes the game plan. And I still haven't figured out the perfect sideboard. Um, Helm of the Sharp Eye, I think, is just there as a safety in case you're playing Assassin and you really don't want to go Royal. I don't think they'll ever uh, side in that card against you where, where they kill a, a Royal a royal Hero. Um, is also there if you just want that extra block and it does still sort of help you with um, going aggro because of the ability here then we have soul shields which is just a really good card because it fills up your soul uh, it blocks for six which is essentially two cards anyways um, so you'd be playing one, paying one yellow for this one blue for this and that's that's fine uh, it's a light card so it works with v the vanguard social cataclysm really good into to grinding games where you're just building your soul build 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 and then you end up with a uh, a big turn of i don't know uh, take flight celestial cataclysm into your sword 14 damage not much but for not many resources that's pretty sweet sink below just a very efficient block uh, this this comes in against cards like ninja where you just want to block with one card to stop any on hits uh, coming in. Uh, Oasis Respite, I don't know about this card. Um, I don't have any AB because the resources I have that I'll be using against uh, uh, Icelander, for example, I want to use on busting up his his Frostbites rather than protecting myself uh, against his uh, arcane damage. Against heroes like Briar and Viscerai, maybe Viscerai more so. There's quite a bit more arcane damage. Is it the right play to not put in Null Rune? Still, I, I still need to sort of get more experience playing this hero to figure that out. Uh, not this hero, this build, I should say. And then Command and Conquer is just a really good card. Uh, coming off a of blue into Take Flight, into Sword, into Command and Conquer. And it's a six. So you. So essentially you have nine poppers as well against the uh, Dromai. So I'm not too fussed when I go into Dromai. Most decks that I play anyways always struggle against Dromai. This one, uh, I've had some good results against the Dragon Queen. Um, especially because whenever I have a blue, I just target one of the Ash Wings. Engulfing Light charges my soul. Or this draws me a card. Um, kills one of their dragons. Um, and then I pop something and... and hopefully go off. They don't have that many disrupting uh, attacks. They do have uh, that one dragon that steals your gold. So be careful of that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's a deck. It's loads of fun. Loads and loads of fun. Um, and I highly recommend you give it a shot. It is a bit... I, I, the heroes I played against coming up, I played against two heroes that I thought I would definitely lose against, and I searched... Uh, for a Bravo, where it's a bit more 
uh, back and forth. So you can see that sort of matchup. You can see me against Phi, a very aggressive uh, slugfest. And you can see me against Icelander, which is just a, a very tough matchup for this. So uh, without further ado, let's get to it. To it, to it, to it, to it, to it. I'm going to do this now. Okay. So I'm going to load this up. I don't know if it's playing. Here we go. Yeah. Um, I'll just pause it when I feel like um, I need to do so. Now I'm thinking of my sideboard. CNC's come in for uh, because he doesn't have a, a headpiece to, to crown. And then, like I said, I put in the sinks to um, uh, stop some of those on hits like snatches at the end of a chain or mounting anger. I generally like to go first because that means I get my soul and my tunic. Guaranteed for turn three. This is a very awkward hand. I have four of my key pieces in my hand, which you might think, oh, that's great. But no, it's not because I need to charge one of these. I need to get the charge going. Um, I'm not sure what I did here. I can't remember. But let's, let's see. Perhaps I should have... Okay, I used the cash in. Nice, nice, not bad. I think, yeah, I think that's what I did. I used the cash in hoping for a, a, a better charge. Um, maybe it's, in hindsight, it's not the best thing to do because those two beacons, they going like this, I'm not going to come back. This game is going to end way before that. So, yeah, maybe not the best thing to do. But now I've got a soul. Which is nice. Yeah, again, tough hand. Two luminous. Um, no charging. No charging cards, and. Uh, my second cash in. So off the bat, things aren't looking too good. I think I double block this cash in and Lumina, if I'm not mistaken. And then illuminate. Um, He's probably not going to block, I'm thinking, at this point, because he's fine. Fast don't block. Okay, so I've been drawing the third hand in a row where I've just got these big mythic cards that I really want to play separately um, but I think I just say at this point I'm like you know what I have three bad hands in a row I'm just gonna see what I can see what I can do uh, uh, with uh, lucky out of, the, out of the war turn meaning I will probably banish my bolt, and, bolt, bolt of courage draw two and pray for something good to happen. In the meantime, I'm getting smacked in the face by a Hour of War turn by the five player, down to 13, 36. Things do not look good at this point in time. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so I didn't do that. Uh, I just bolt of uh, courage straight up. Okay. Double Lumina. Aiming to gain six life back. And I don't think I use my tunic because I'm going to say, I'm thinking to myself, 
I have be the vanguard in my arsenal where I want it to be. I have Tunic on 3 where I want it to be. Um, so, yeah. But I only have one cash in left. So 19 point swing, not the end of the world. Uh, snatch, also something I like to see. Mounting anger, okay, so this is where sink below comes in. Just an efficient card, uh, it, it acts, it makes your play is more aggressive because you don't need to block with two cards. Block the one, saving the three in the hand. So sometimes it's a good thing to have a D-react. Um, yeah, so all these are pretty, pretty vanilla type hits. I'm thinking I don't need to block any of this. Uh, it's quite a good turn. Yeah, okay, so I kept the uh, Courageous Steel Hand in case uh, it's something I draw. Yeah, perhaps, yeah, that was a smart move because then I could either arsenal it um, or use it on Snatch if they think about blocking the Snatch. But again, he's five, so is he going to block the Snatch? Probably not. So I think I, I don't know if I use Courage Steel Hand here. Okay, so I'm actually playing much more patient than I thought I ever would. And I don't know why I put it in Arsenal. Having a, a Sink Blow in Arsenal is generally always better because it means you have at least a five card block in hand. And against five, you've got to block with um, Sink Blow. Okay, I am designed to keep my hand over my equipment. Good thing, I don't know. Okay, so he's coming in hard. He's coming in hard. Okay, lucky for me he didn't have the oh snatch. Okay, cool. So I was rewarded by holding on to the sink. And I get to him to, to crack his boots. I don't know why he cracked them because I would be dead if I didn't play my if I didn't block it. So I think it was a misplay by the five player. Um, I had to play and de react, so he could have at least waited for my reaction first before popping them boots. What do I do here? I think I go. I don't think I play be the vanguard because it's just too too uh, resource intensive. I go for the bolt of courage into courageous steel hand um, into hoping I draw something nice. Already at this point, I'm, I'm thinking I've done much better than I thought I would have. Um, okay, sweet. So I think he has to block the Illuminate. Yeah, so yeah, I remember this. So I, I drew into that. And then because his life toll is so low, he has to block Illuminate or Engulfing Light. I think I play Illuminate now because he has to block it. Um, yeah, and it gives me an, an extra... Uh, an extra attack 
then with this card he has to double block and finally I now have some ascendancy in the game yeah and because it's Phi there is really like he all his all his all his cards are attack actions. His non-attacks are what are they? Uh, getting getting your Ashwing back, not your Ashwing. Okay, well he gave up because he knew it did block two cards here, two cards against my sword, and then I have my uh, snatches lined up. Take them out. So that was <coughs> that was a, a scary game, especially after his his big turn there. Next up. Uh, no, nope, we leave that because we don't want to play him again. So I make my own. Make my own game. Hopefully, come across a bit more of an interesting matchup for you guys. And it is. It is Icelander, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I was thinking of not playing this game because I thought. Oh god, Icelander. This is like one of the worst matchups for uh, for my Bolton deck. But I can't keep playing the easy matchups or easy quote unquote easy matchups for you guys. So I said, you know what, screw it, let's give it a shot. I was contemplating Oasis Respite, and I realized even if he hits me with what that five eighth eighth or ice vein, I don't have a, a, a fifth point of. Uh, prevention for the null rune but if it's through the yellow or the blue uh, it would be nice to have it in so that is what I did, I kept it in I kept two of them in and then just focused on um, hitting him in the face kept the blue here uh, to go through frostbites Another, another annoying thing against Icelander is that they don't have any uh, or many attack action cards. There are more now with Bullander, but not quite enough to for you to rely on the uh, bonus from what's his face uh, Bolton's ability. I think I chuck out the yep. Makes sense. I want to keep the yellow and the take flight. No, I want to keep the blue and the take flight. Sorry, I chuck out the yellow. Keep the blue and the take flight, so that I can pay through anything except uh, channel like fridge. So I'm using my 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 gauntlets here, whatever they're called, Brave Forge bracers, because there's no one hits from this dude. Perhaps he's playing Command and Conquer with the Goliath gauntlets, um, but I don't think he is. Or I just don't. This game's not going to last long enough for me to to worry about a, a one and three card. Oof, painful. Blizzarded. Blizzarded adoed. Yeah, nothing I can do there. Okay, so this is a good looking turn. 
afterwards. I've got to be the vanguard into... This is what actually I was scared here. I was scared there was, I mentioned the, the CNC plus gauntlet. So I was a little bit scared at this point. Um, but luckily he showed me a wounded biddle. So I use my tunic first to see what he's got in arsenal. Giving him a window to play something, and then that will help me decide my turn. Let's see here's chill. Pretty harmless by itself. In combination with other things, it absolutely destroys me. I charge here. Yeah, it makes most sense to charge the bolting blade. Perhaps I should have um, double charge. Am I double charging for fear of blizzard? I think that's it. I think this is, I think, yeah, I don't know if it was the right thing to do, I could have uh, charged once, or maybe I was just thinking of my soul as well. Not only am I playing around Blizzard, keeping a, a useless hand, a uh, useless card in my hand if he plays it, but I'm also buffing my, keeping my soul up. And I'm uh, doing six damage extra, two off each attack. Whereas with the Illuminate, it would be seven damage, one off each attack, plus the Illuminate of four, eight damage, because I would have had an extra attack. I would have four attacks plus Illuminate. He's not blocking. Um, this is where the snatch via the vanguard turns really this is not the best example but it, it is an example of how they work together I think he refuses to block here as well it's fine by me fine by me takes it all good and then I draw another snatch amaze bolts so I, I give myself the go again because the plus two from V the Vanguard is just too good to waste whether it's a zero cost attack or I don't know. So I don't have anything else in my deck. I, I really don't. I don't have uh, another uh, bolt and blade, but that's going to come in for for free anyways. Bolt of courage, nice. Another on hit draw card. Now, now I was thinking, do I push my luck and, and do the snap dragon scalers? Uh, I, I opted not to do that just because I really want that for Lumina turn just in case I need that I don't have enough soul but I drew a Bolt of Courage again so punished ending the turn I forgot what I did here. I know I attacked both courage, but what did I do after that? I think I bolt of courage into uh, bolting blade because I just have so many resources.
cold snaps. Yep. So it's because it's fine. So I then go in with the, the uh, courageous paying for it with my spirit of Irinia. And no matter what I draw, will let me attack with a bolting blade. So that's a 14 damage turn. A 13 damage turn. My math is a little bit off. So it's threatening lethal. lethal. But my soul is low. I have no arsenal. He still has his helmet up. And he's got tunic up as well. So he also has three activations on his on his insidious chill. So it's a little bit scary. Oh, he's cracking it. He's cracking it. By he, I mean me. In the past. Past tense me. Mm. So I think I thought about playing Take Flight into the sword. Oh yeah, I remember, I remember my, my, my thought process here. My thought process was I just need to put as much pressure on him so he's not doing things to me. Because if he gets one channel like frigid or one uh, good fuse turn, he's right back in the game. And without AB, I'm just a sitting duck to this arcane damage. So here he has to block with uh, two cards from hand, minimum. Card from hand plus two plus armor, or two cards from hand plus armor plus tunic, depending on the route he wants to go down. If you're a Bolton player, you'll probably get this a lot as well. People not realizing that they're two blocks. Two block attack action cards are basically useless. Or they're trying to perfect block a, a non hit card like Bolt of Courage and realize that, that the, the, the Bolton bonus, Bolton bonus, nice, I thought that. The Bolton bonus. And does its thing. Yeah, so I think he revealed Channel Lake Frigid to block, so I know what's coming. I'm not happy about it. Mm -mm -mm. The three four damage here. So I'm thinking I know he's got a channel lake. So he's gonna channel lake plus moon me. It's three damage and then my turns are messed up. If I hit him with a seven, it means he needs to channel lake, moon, block with two. Doesn't let him keep the channel lake around. So the the dilemma in my head at this point is how low is too low against this guy? Now, zero arcane barrier. Um, he can do 11 damage maximum. Uh, no, he can do 12 damage maximum um, with uh, Emeritus Scolding, whatever it's called, Emeritus, the Scolding card, which is four from Arsenal or on the opponent's turn. Um, five with his boots, storm striders, and then three more with waning moon. So twelve damage. That's that's the that's the threshold. Hits me with four here. It's gonna hit me with three next turn. So it's pretty seven. Uh, I'm gonna have fourteen. 
A definite 14. So I take this. And then I attack 7. But he plays he plays around my bluff. Not my bluff, he plays around what my my plan was I was hoping he'd he'd put out Channel Lake. Instead he just blocks out keep Channel Lake and Arsenal and waits to use it on a better turn. Makes sense. Then I think is zero cost, zero cost something. Come on, hit me in the head. Yep. This, this hand's not too bad though. So the the take flight helps me get around the channel. And the frostbite. But again, it's gonna cost him two cards. Uh, one card to play Channel Lake. He has three cards in hand, and I'll have 10 damage coming at him. Uh, so it is, it, it is a tough spot for him, tough pickle. I mess up my math here though. He channel lakes. I know he's going to channel lake. Um, and I know I have to use tunic. And then for some reason, I think, well, I'm using tunic. Because I had a plan in my head. This is what he's going to do. I need tunic because. And then I forget that Bolton's ability is going to cost me one from Channel Lake. So I take it back. And then I play a little bit of a pitch move. And I say, sorry, I forgot to do this. Um, luckily, he doesn't complain. Um, I think it, I think it was too late for me. I think I don't think I should have. The, the attack was already on the floor. So for me, I think it was too late. But he, he's, a, he's a good sport. He lets me have it. Um, spoiler alert. We have a rematch. Uh, and I beat him in the room. Without any takesy backsies. So I think he's playing his um, nice sink below. What a card. What a card. Then I think he has to. Yeah, he goes. I think, yeah. I'm hoping he only has two blocks and he has to block with both of them. But he has. What does he have? Even a three blocks not the end of the world because it means it puts him down to one. And any sort of pump kills him. This I think I misplayed at this point. I should have. What should I have done? I should have enlightened strike, struck, enlightened struck for seven, go again. And then um, Bolton play. Instead, I play the surprising the surprise route. Maybe it's better. I'm still unsure, but I'm glad he only had that red in hand because it meant I now know that whatever he has, 
uh, he's going to use his, his, his storm striders unless it's a blizzard him having another sink below doesn't happen I take the win uh, yeah I, it's, uh, both games Fi and Icelander I was super surprised to have, to have got the win on both those games uh, especially after Fi's ginormous start with his 20 plus damage turn I think it was 23 damage turn um, and then uh, just, just just Icelanders is tough, just tough in general. The yeah, play again. Uh, I could fast forward it so we can go through it quickly. The third and final game of the day is against the Bravo. I actively went looking for a Bravo because of the gameplay is a bit more nuanced, I think. I'm not going to say from who, from where, from how, but that's just what happened. Uh, what I do here, crappy hand, crappy hand, played spirit, mm-hmm, and then I think I put one luminate in. I was thinking crippling crush or command and conquer what do I need to be most afraid about I just did that luckily he just says this I'm pretty sure he's going to pummel me because yeah why wouldn't you if you have so many resources up he does I'm always glad to see a pummel on a weapon and not on a on hit card I forgot what I, I think I, okay, so I think he goes back, because he forgets the pump, like I mentioned before, the bolt and bonus, bolt and buff, I think bolt and buff is better, the bolt and buff, it happens all the time, I say, smiley face. Here, sticking up. Put in one Lumina. I think he yeah I think he blocks with a D react what does he yes he does and then I get to bring my second one in see if he wastes a card for this on hit he does not I get two over the vanguard it hurts express lightning red also hurts That's fine. Another. Yep. Cool. Left them handless, got rid of some equipment. Mm. I think I blocked five here because I don't I don't need to take the damage and I don't want the cards either and I attack with illuminate and arsenal is snatch just makes the most sense um, at this point I'm thinking already about our deck sizes because of the way he's playing um, he's not bothering to arsenal maybe he doesn't need to arsenal the card I forgot what it was that he pitched But he's not going in for these big massive turns. Okay, block two here, swing back with snatch. 
and then save my Lumina. Barbaros is one of my favorite heroes to play against. Like I, I don't like him. I mean, I, I like him actually quite a bit in terms of what he can do. But I, his, his, he can be aggressive. He can be defensive. His on hits are painful. The dominates. You got to play around. Um, it's just an interesting, always an interesting game because I like mid range style heroes. So I'm never. Um, what's the word? Spinal crush. I think I block with enlightened strike here because I want to open up my arsenal so I go and get a, get a fourth soul block with e-strike hit back with uh, express lightning and courageous steel hand that way I get to uh, use some cards properly not properly, maybe use cards increase my soul count and have perhaps that one extra point of damage uh, if he blocks a charged attack. So Spinal Crush can be crushing, but it's also at least I, I have a, a hand that works around it. If I get to do 7 damage here, then our life totals are looking pretty juicy. Mm, what should I do here? Not much. Okay, this is what yeah, I remember. So I block with Snatch. And I put cash in, in my arsenal and I use the tunic counter to go off with uh, take flight and then get another Lumina Ascension turn. Because so I think the pressure from Lumina Ascension is, is good for me so I can get some breathing space for the next hand. That's sort of the way I think about it. I don't, you know, Lumina Ascension is great, uh, it is offensive, it, it does quite a bit of damage, gain some life, but more importantly it wrecks the opponent's hand because they feel like they need to block it. And maybe they do, I, I don't I don't know. I wouldn't rate it that highly. But um yeah. The what I get out of it that's most important to me is the soul and ruining their hand. Preparing my next my next turn. The problem with this though is that I lose my counter on my tunic, so even if I do draw a view the vanguard, I am in trouble. Not in trouble, I just don't have the most efficient the most efficient hand for that. Oh sorry, my back is hurting. Can't seem to get comfortable in this chair. Boom, Oasis in. Their life tells aren't looking too good. I can see that. Does the OD react? He does not. Boom. What a celestial cataclysm. That's a good card in this in this matchup because the soul generally tends to be a little bit higher in this matchup than in other matchups. So a cataclysmic event is good. Okay, so I do get my V the Vanguard, which is very interesting. I hope to take this damage. 
because it's vanilla. By vanilla, I just mean it's a. Uh, it just hasn't. It just does damage. There's no on hit. There's no destruction of arsenal, or crush, or whatever. It's plain old vanilla. What's that? Future self is like to you guys once again. I do block it. I do block it. Uh, uh, uh. I'm gonna draw. But perhaps, yeah. I remember thinking. Actually, yeah, I remember thinking. Oh God, I drew a synchro, but I'd rather draw a synchro now than off a um, cash in. Because now I can V with the sync. Putting in take flight, and then I have uh, plus four attack. So it gives you plus one on, on each attack. So it's plus one on V the Vanguard, plus one on Bolt of Courage, plus one on Engulfing Light, and then plus one on the Sword. And the Bolt of Courage needs to be blocked. It's still looking pretty grim because he's got five cards. Yeah, I think I attack with this first to try and get rid of his armor. I hope he does like a one hand block plus one armor. Because the blue bolt of courage is pretty pathetic. might have been better as just going into the soul. Yep, and I attack with this first so I don't waste my soul. Because um, I'm going to have one go again regardless. I'm going to go again. If I went with the sword first, I'd go again. Now I have the Bolt of Courage first. I would do that with go again. But if you go the Bolt of Courage first and they don't block it, you give it the go again, you might draw into something nice. Uses the last of his armor, and I'm going to come in for four more. This guy, this guy does not know what's going to hit him. A four attack sword, that's what's going to hit him. Cool, so he saved up his big turn, and I was lucky enough to draw my soul shield. I get to soul shield him, then I get to illuminate him, um, and then save engulfing light for the arsenal. And now he has got no armor blocks, no arsenal. The tides have turned. Okay, this is a bang in turn, I recall. So I take this. Down to 13. Whoop, whoop. Big whoop. Am I right? And this is a good example of Art of War. This little sucker. Nice. So I play him, put Oasis under. So now I can play Ball of Courage as well. Not Ball of Courage, I mean bolt, bolt, Bolting Blade. Because everything's plus one, plus one now. This is coming for four. Except for my sword. My sword is still a three. But that's okay. Coming for eight, go again, and my soul is healthy, healthy, healthy. And 
And the sword goes in. What am I doing? Am I contemplating the sword or to blade a uh, bolting blade? I think sword first is better. Um, always save the best for last is what I like to say. Yeah, at this point my computer's dying, which I think it's doing right now as well. Um, so I apologize to the guy for that. I don't know if this has any effect on what happens next, um, but there's a bunch of disconnects on both ends. Play one is reconnected. One is disconnected. Player one is reconnected. I think it's mainly my my end, which is having the problems. And yeah, okay. So my computer seems to be working again. Coming for the three, he takes it. He uses the sink below, which I thought he would have used um, on the Cataclysm, but maybe the Cataclysm was vanilla, and he thought, I'll wait for something bigger. Oops, sorry. And then I come with the bolting blade, and I get the GG from him, which is kind of odd, because he's got four cards in his hand. He needs to block with two or three of them. And he's okay, he blocks with two of those, he takes three down to four, and he still has um, a good turn. But, uh, yeah, there you have it. That's the game. He's done. Opponent disconnects. Um, and this beautiful deck goes three for three against some tough heroes. Uh, against the tough heroes, tough games. Um... Uh, Still not Lexi, still not Azuri, even though Azuri, uh, I, I, I'm okay with Lexi, I think we will be very tough. Um, yeah, cool, so that was it, it's a long one, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, the games weren't too long, but this whole video was kind of long. Um, yeah, if you have any, any comments on the deck, and especially helping me decide what to put in instead of Oasis Respite, or do I keep races of spite? I think it's mainly the sideboard which I'm which I need a bit of help with. So if anyone has suggestions, be my guest, send them my way. Uh and I'd love to read about those. Uh and that's it from me. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye.